The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy, Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Thrillers, thrilling mystery, espionage, and political intrigue? Step into the world of action and psychological twist. Join us as we go back to the early days of radio and our imaginations with our featured thriller presentation. Mrs. M. By David Campton, Mrs. Meadowsweet offers visitors to her country guest house a truly carefree holiday. Everybody is so happy, a little vague perhaps, but certainly happy. Newcomers Madge and Arthur are suspicious, but can Mrs. M convert them? If you can't speak without swearing, you might as well save your breath. I only asked where the hell we were. We are supposed to be outside Honiton. We'd be outside Honiton if you could read a map. I only hope we reach civilization before sunset. And when we do, perhaps we shall get some tea. Typical. Adrift in the wilderness and you witter about tea. Well, it's nearly five hours since that lousy ploughman's lunch. You chose the pub, my sweet. You're the one who shouted stop. Stop! Stop! What is it now? That sign. It says respite. What of it? Well, they might serve teas. Does the sign say teas? They might even put us up for the night. Ever the optimist? Oh, well, we could ask. Look, there's the drive. That is private property. Well, it doesn't say private. It doesn't have to. Oh, you're not driving on. What else do you expect? Respite. What sort of a sign is that? Respite. Welcome to Respite, my dears. Do you expect anyone to find this place half a mile up a car track? Oh, I always say if people are meant to find us, they'll find us. <laughs> we wonder if you... nearly over, but no need to hurry. You'd like to do something about the dust first. There's hot and cold in all rooms. I haven't said anything about a room. There's always a welcome at Respite, Mr... Benson. I'm Mrs. Meadowsweet. You can sign the register later, Mr. Benson. Really? Why? You will be staying. Yes. I didn't say yes. I said yes, Arthur. I'll be staying. You can please yourself. Inga can lend a hand with the cases. Inga! <sighs> We're putting Mr. and Mrs. Benson in the honeysuckle room, my dear. Mr. and Mrs. Benson are staying. Just for tonight. Oh, as long as you need. Stay just as long as you need. This is the honeysuckle room. All the rooms are named after flowers. At least there's a lavender and a wild thyme and a musk rose. Tea is being served in the dining room. Oh, this is a lovely room. Probably a lovely price. Do you realise we didn't even ask? We could be charged the earth. These rustics aren't as duft as they sound. Shut up, will you? Oh, there's a lovely view from the window. Uh, Mrs Meadowsweet said... Yes. There's a lovely view. Ah, Lovely gardens. Lovely trees. Oh, they make a lovely screen. What's behind the trees? I... I... Probably the lovely sewage farm. I shan't tell you again, Arthur. It's so peaceful here. Oh, yes. Peaceful. How long have you been here? Me? Uh, My name's Inga. Oh, (laughs) well, thank you, Inga. Tea is served in the dining room. Congratulations, my love. All Devon to choose from, and we end in a Wendy house stuffed by cretins. All right, all right. So you still want to fight? You wouldn't still be brooding about that boy, would you? You were in a foul mood even before we picked him up. Do you really think I can be put out by a mere student? Oh, save it. Look, we've got to get down while they're still serving tea. Um, where can we sit? Why not sit here? Oh, gets a scent from the garden, you know. And you see so much more from here. Oh, well, thank oh, you. I'm Miss Bray's nose and you're... <clears throat> Benson. This is my wife. Any more about us you'd like to know? You'll have to forgive my husband, Miss Bray's nose. He's he's not always so uncouth. He's only when he's with me. (laughs) My spouse has a gift for rousing the worst in anyone. Please don't bicker. Everybody at Respite is so happy. Delightful for them. Mrs. Meadowsweet is responsible, of course. A chat with Mrs. Meadowsweet can be so soothing. 
have a word with her. Well, we'll have to speak to her about the terms, anyway. <laughs> We're on holiday, just, you know, meandering. Mm. We don't book anywhere in advance. That way, if you don't like the place, you've only yourself to blame. Well, some people can find fault with anything. Oh, thank you, Inga. Inga? <laughs> Are you all the stuff they can muster here? Me? I think there's... There's more tea, if you ring for it. A dinner is served at half past seven. A tip doesn't always make up for rudeness, you know. Oh, who's rudeness? Even if that bloody-mindedness is second nature. Please, we're not used to squabbling here. I shall have to see Mrs. Meadowsweet. But Miss Bray's knows. Let I... her go. I'm quite prepared to pay what we owe and leave. I'll see Mrs. Meadowsweet now. Why? You're letting your tea get cold. I understood you were breaking your neck for it. You'll enjoy your scone so much more when you know how much you're paying. Unless, of course, it chokes you. Where do you suppose I'll find Mrs M? With your sense of direction, it could take some time. Thanks, Mrs M. I'll do that at once. Oh, Miss Bray's knows. Are you looking for me? Well, I'm looking for Mrs Meadows, sweet, but I ought to apologise to you. We didn't mean to drive you from your table. Never apologise, never explain. Who are you, anyway? You don't remember me? Should I? You'll find Mrs M in there. Oh, thank you. No need to stand knocking, my dear. Come in. Now, what can be troubling you? Well, we haven't asked how much our room is going to cost. No more than you can afford, my dear. But you've more on your mind than our price list, haven't you? Of course. Was Miss Spray's nose complaining? Oh, guests come and go with their problems. They say I'm a good listener. Oh, it's so silly. It started with a hitchhiker. Do sit down. Well, it wasn't worth quarrelling over. Oh. I'm listening, my dear. You know, the sort that gives stroppy students a bad name. Oh, why did I insist that we ought to pick him up? I don't know. No? You're right, I do. To put one over on Arthur. For the row over the ploughman's lunch. So we were stuck with... Said his name was Simon something. I wasn't taking much notice. Too busy swapping insults with Arthur. We're pretty expert. And after a few miles, the Bolshe in the back demanded to be put down again. He said we were giving him a splitting head. His nerves couldn't take any more. And if we didn't stop, he'd throw himself out. Well, Arthur and I didn't utter another word for at least ten miles. Stunned. <laughs> Mind you, we found our voices after that. I always say there's nothing in this world as bitter as a memory turned sour. But you're not going to worry about it any longer, are you? I say you're not going to worry. Worry? <laughs> what about? Never mind, my dear. I always say what you can't remember can't hurt you. I mean, I... I, I came to see you about something... Your room? I hope honeysuckles to your liking. Oh, no problem there. I'm sure I'll sleep well, but... Now, don't go chasing after old memories, my dear. Let them go. And if anything else bothers you, I'm always ready to listen. Haven't you finished snuffling at that window yet? There's a bed of night-scented stock below us. All this sweetness and light is leading up to something. I can't understand why you're in such a bad mood. Oh, this afternoon never happened, of course. This afternoon? You know very well. After the ploughman's lunch? What ploughman's lunch? Oh, what a convenient memory. The ploughman's lunch. Wrong bread, wrong cheese, wrong pickle. Remember? No. But who cares? Oh, pinks, jillivers, and evening primroses. Very well. 
Arthur, where are you going? I am going down to that garden. I'm going to blow cigar smoke all over the night-scented stocks. I might even jump on the bloody pinks. This table again. No, Miss Bray's nose. She struck me as an early riser. Uh, isn't that her? <laughs> Bringing in a tray from the kitchen. I said they were short of stuff. <laughs> Trust that one not to lose time before I took it into her kidneys and bacon. Yeah, she's not coming over here. She put the tray down on another table. She's going back. Arthur, she's <laughs> serving. Why? Oh, don't ask me. I don't run the place. Tea or coffee? Oh, <laughs> Inga, isn't it? <laughs> yes, Inga. Uh, isn't that Miss Bray's nose serving at table? Couldn't she pay the bill? <laughs> Tea or coffee? Fruit juice or cereal? You get more sense out of a telephone answering machine. What do you know, girl? Um, tea, please, Inga, and fruit juice. Coffee and uh, porridge. Uh, surely Miss Brazenose is one of the guests. Guests don't tea usually... Tea and coffee, fruit juice and cereal. <sighs> well, let's look on the bright side. This is our last meal here. Are you so sure? Positive. You pack while I check the car. A beautiful car, Mr. Benson. Uh, she'll do till I find a better at the price. Just making sure she's ready for off. You are going, then? One day here, next day miles ahead. I say keep moving, even on holiday. And after the holiday? There's always a business. Oh, your own, of course. I started it. Borrowed capital in a 14-day week. I take things more easily now. No more than a 24-hour day. <laughs> When you first set foot in respite, I said, there's a man with a load on his mind. Yeah. Uh, who do I settle with? Who but me, dear? Well, shall we take the pretty way back to the house, through the garden? Uh, tell me more about what you do. Exactly how did the business begin? What's good for business isn't always so good for a marriage. I suppose, in a way, that's where things started to go wrong. Oh, the marriage hasn't gone wrong, my dear. You only have to give it as much attention as you do the car. The car? Would you like to know something? I'm listening. I didn't really want that car in the first place. Too extravagant, wasteful to run. But once I'd started to beat the seller down, I couldn't stop. Especially when I realised he'd got to sell. I almost felt sorry for him. Only feeling sorry isn't good for business. It was a bargain. I could sell tomorrow and make a profit. He was almost crying at the price. Does it hurt to remember? Remember? Remember what? Well, bargaining can be a fine and exciting way to earn a living, but I'd say it was too much for a 24-hour day. Oh, for a change, I'd suggest something more relaxing. Gardening now. Gardening? I've always hated gardening. Always? When I was at the Christopher Robin age, I was scared by a slug. Is that a fact? Yeah, horrid black thing. More like a leech. Must have seemed enormous to a child. I can remember it now. <coughs> you don't like slugs either, Mrs. Meadowsweet. I don't like false memories, Mr. Benson. Oh? Oh, a false memory's worse than a bad nut. Sickening. Would you be calling me a liar? Exactly why don't you like gardening, Mr. Benson? Just what is it you'd rather not remember? I tell you, I... Oh, you're a knowing old devil, Mrs. Meadowsweet. Well, I've had experience. Well, I don't know why I bother telling you, but... You see, my father actually liked gardening... He always kept his tools bright and shining. You could have used his spade as a mirror. <laughs> In a manner of speaking. Well, one day, I thought I'd help. I dug up the dahlias. Not only that, I left his spade out in the rain. He made no allowance for youth or inexperience. He half killed me. That beating hurt me more than it hurt him, I can tell you. It still does when I think about it. Oh, memories can be so painful, my dear. 
I'm sure that one's better out than in. So why don't you like gardening? Who said I don't like gardening? I just can't spare the time. Hey, would you like to see our tool shed? Huh? Oh, the last gardener left everything so spotless. Yeah, he left us not so long ago, but the weeds are creeping back. Cooch grass under the roses and such like. Oh, bless me. We've walked full circle. That's a beautiful car, Mr. Benson. I bet it's like some women. Lovely to look at, but a bitch to run. Do you know whose it is? Somebody just signed in. Never you mind, my dear. This is the way to the potting shed. Miss Brasenows. Well, what are you doing in our room? Making beds, of course. But why? Beds have to be made. They come unmade every night. Yes, but you didn't make the beds yesterday, did you? I'm making them today. <laughs> I'm afraid you're wasting your time. We shan't be here tonight. I've just come in to pack. Oh, that's up to you. I was told to make these beds. Are you telling me to stop? Well, no. If you've been told, I, I must have. A, I must have a word with Arthur. What on earth's got into you? Amazing how weeds get mixed up with ground cover. They're not supposed to. But what are these? Look, Arthur, you went to get the car out. Remember? Car. While I packed. Pack? Why pack? We're leaving, Arthur. There is something about this place. There's Miss Brasenose doing the bedrooms. And now, this is just not you. You never even want to cut the lawn. She didn't mention the lawn. This is Meadowsweet. You've been talking to Mrs. Meadowsweet. She's a good listener. Oh, for goodness sake, climb out of those idiotic dungarees and let's make a start. If she wants a trench digging tomorrow for celery or some such. I'm going to have a few words with Mrs. Meadows Sweet myself. Now. Mrs. M. My dear. What is going on here? Well, nothing that hasn't been going on for long enough, my dear. I've just left my husband on all fours grubbing about the garden. Well, he seemed happy enough when I left. Oh, he's happy enough now. As I like to leave people happy. That's not the point. He's like a kid playing with sandcastles. What have you done to him? Done, my dear? When he left me, he was set to pay the bill. Oh, let's not bother about bills till we have to. We were on our way out. Like bats out of hell, in Arthur's own words. I remember them perfectly. Do you, my dear? Are you asking me to repeat them? He said... Oh, and another thing. Are you listening? I'm here. What about Miss Brasenose? Tell me. Yesterday, she was complaining about us like a regular. Today, she's doing the rooms. That's right. Now tell me it's none of my business, if you like. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Why, then? Why? Well, Miss Brasenose has some very unhappy memories locked away deep. So deep and so unhappy, whole days had to go by before she'd bring just one of them to me. I'm afraid they're not all out yet. I just don't understand. I can't take memories, you see. Only accept what's offered. Even false memories. Though we won't talk about them if you don't mind. It's not nice at all. Exactly what does that mean? I'm often surprised at the way folk will cling to something that must be hurting so much. Particularly when there's somebody at hand to take the pain away. Let's get this straight. Yes, my dear. They often say that. You're telling me that you can remove memories. Like... like stains. Only when freely bestowed. I can't take any unpleasantness I don't know about. Though I believe I am allowed to prompt. Still, in my experience, when one bit of beastliness comes out, the others follow. 
I left Arthur digging. Did he talk to you about his memories? Oh, an unhappy man, my dear. But lighter-hearted now, I reckon. He actually unburdened himself to a stranger. Why not? Because he never would to me. Never. Oh, you have to learn to listen, my dear. Listening is a skill that improves with practice. Mind you, the knack has to be there in the first place. You mustn't blame yourself if you never had it. Years of wrangling, when all he had to do was open up. Years, my dear? Years of brooding silences and storms out of clear blue skies. Years without a word of what was going on underneath. All on account of that damn business. Go on, my dear. What? You were telling me? No. Whatever I told you already was too much. I'm not telling you any more. I know what you can do. I don't know how, but my name is Inga. That girl wandering about in a fuddled haze. Yes? All she knows is her name, if she knows even that much by now. Everything else is gone. Inga, Miss Bray's nose, Arthur, is that what happens to them all? Oh, God, will Arthur end up like Inga? You remember Inga, do you? Who could forget her? And remembering Inga upsets you, my dear? Oh, what do you expect? No, I shouldn't let Inga be a worry if I were you. As far as you're concerned, there never was an Inga. Now, doesn't that make you feel better? What do you mean, make me feel better? Not knowing about Inga. Inga? I don't know who Inga may have been, but I know who Arthur is. I know what he was. You're telling me that you make a habit of turning normal human beings... Unhappy, twisted, mixed-up beings, my dear. All right. Of turning everyday neurotics into happy zombies. Well, if you like to put it that way, my dear. I just did. Oh, very well. I accept the way you put it. Now, what can I do for you? You have a lovely touch with fruit cake, my dear. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but it's time for thinking about dinner. With duck to come, why not give a hand shelling, please? Ah, oh. no, Bray's nose. It wasn't the timer. Oh. The bell in the hall. I'll answer it in a minute. Just carry on scraping potatoes. If those aren't enough, I'll get Arthur to dig up some more. I remember potatoes in the war. I'm sure you do, Bray's nose. In the ATS. Piles of them each day. I'm coming. Jump to it, I'd say. Call that peeled. Who left those eyes in? I was a sergeant in those days. Were you, dear? Lonely life. Nobody loves a sergeant. At least one did. But he didn't last. Think of him sometimes. You've never mentioned the ATS before, Miss Bray's nose. And it would be a kindness not to mention it again, Mrs. Benson. Painful memories are best not put back. Oh. I said I'm coming! Now, my dears, just keep yourselves happy with peas and potatoes. There's a visitor waiting. Good afternoon. Hmm. You'll be wanting a room. I don't know yet. Is that all the baggage you brought? Never go by appearances. It must be powerful, heavy on your back. Why not take it off? Mm. Never stopped at a place like this before. Doesn't look as though you cater for students. You'd be surprised who we take in. I always say if you find your way here, you're meant to be here. In the middle of nowhere. Or put the other way round, if you weren't meant to be here, you'd never have found us at all. Mm. I can pay. Oh, but of course you pay, my dear. Guests always do. I'll get Madge to show you to, um... Yes, Comfrey. It's next to the bathroom. This is Comfrey. It's named after a flower. <laughs> I've never seen any Comfrey myself, but I'll take Mrs Hem's word for it. Don't I know you? Me? Why should you think that? Well, my name's Scratton. 
Simon Scratton. You picked me up the other day. No, you must be mistaken. You can see the gardens from these windows. The red car, about the size of a fire engine. Only vegetable gardens on this side of the house, I'm afraid. I... Oh, I wonder why he's digging that hole. You must remember me. I'm the chap you had a fight over. When you drove off, you were still racketing over me. Over you? You can't have forgotten. <laughs> Honestly, Mr... Well, I've never seen you before. I... Uh... Well, I suppose I could have made a mistake. <laughs> but I'd have sworn. She might have been older. But you're just like her, except for the wrinkles. Mine? Hers. You talk like her. Husband had grey hair. She called him Arthur. Oh, Arthur's down there, digging. Where? Well, well that's him. Well, if he's him, you must be you. Just what are you after, young man? Me? Well, it can't be blackmail. I'm going down to that garden. Let's hear what he has got to say. My husband? Yeah, you're sure he's your husband, are you? Eh? Can you remember where you married him? <laughs> of course I remember. We were married in... Weren't we? Hey there, you! Have you ever grown celery? Somehow this hole doesn't look right. You're Arthur Benson. I suppose I must be. I remember you from a couple of days back. Remember me? Let's see, what was I doing a couple of days back? Giving me a lift. Was I? My name's Scratton. I don't expect you to remember that. Well, it's not a name to forget in Ori. You look like... You ever done a real day's work in your life? I told you I'm a student. Medical. Failed. Typical. Your generation. No moral fibre. Ah, <laughs> yes, you're the fascist swine I met the other day, all right. Ah, you're thinking of someone else. Uh, will you excuse me? This spade needs cleaning. Wipe everything as soon as you finish with it. If either you're a nutcase or a bigger snob than your wife, all right, sir. You don't want to know me. But at least have the guts to say so. Don't give me that glass-eyed look. Not after the row you had over me. My, you are a mixed-up yob. You ought to have a talk to Mrs M. She'll straighten you out. Uh, who's this Mrs M? She runs this place. Uh, what sort of a place is this? Oh, now you're asking. Well, how long have you been here? I... Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It must be... No, oh, before that. Oh, ask Mrs M. She'll know. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm um, put this spade away. Hey, hey, this isn't a guest house, you know. It's a funny shop. That's why they let me in with no questions. I think I belong here. Of course you do, my dear. Eh? Arthur digs a neat hole, doesn't he? You never think so to look at him. What are you sneaking round after? Well, you didn't hear me on the path. I expect you were otherwise occupied. I shouldn't try to put back the day before yesterday if I were you. It can't be done. And it's bound to confuse Arthur. You know him, do you? No, oh, forget it. How did you come to meet? I'm fed up with both him and her. Long ago or recently? I'll let it go. You don't want to get it off your chest? No. Let's walk the pretty way. Spinach is all very fine, but it can't compare with sweet peas for colour. We find the flowers restful. No, well, I don't. You haven't given respite much chance yet, my dear. Now, what's on your mind? Nothing. Oh, botheration. That's not strictly true. But it's more polite than up yours. Or don't you expect manners from me? Ah, that's the path to the potting shed. We'll turn this way. Oh. The car! You've seen it before? That red monster? <laughs> Never. Again? Oh, no insult intended, young man. But sometimes a lie tells more than the truth. Why shouldn't you recognize this red monster? Why should you want to know? I'm here, aren't I? Just another bed and breakfast. 
You want to know how I got here? On my two feet. They were hurting. I saw the sign in the lane and I followed the potholes. Now, you ought to do something about that drive. Anyway, here I am and my feet still hurt. Not for long, I'm sure. You'll find unburdening comes easier with practice. You're sure you don't want to tell me what happened in the car? I never force anyone, of course. But sooner or later they come to me. You'll see. Arthur! Arthur, are you in the tool shed? Come in, quick! Oh, I've been trying to remember Over things. Here. You know, like our wedding day. Look, Madge, what? on the sacks. Ooh. Ooh, who is she? You know as well as I do who she is. Do I? It's Inga. Inga? Oh, this is no time for playing silly fools. What's the matter with her? You're a woman, you ought to know. Ooh, is she? I'm asking you. Ooh. She's very still. I can see that. And cold and stiff and staring. Oh, then she must be. I tell you, I don't know. She, well, she's nothing to do with us, Arthur, is she? I found her. There could be questions. Oh. How come you recognise her when I don't? Of course you recognise her. What are you trying to do? Insist that I'm responsible? Well, she didn't just lie down on those sacks and... and, and... We don't know that she is, do we? But better talk to Mrs. M. No, I've a better idea. Well, she's in I was charge. talking to a young chap a while ago, a medical student. He said failed. But even a failed medical student ought to be able to tell the difference between... And... I mean, if she's really... But you, you, you stop here oh, while I... Inga. Who's Inga? Did you find him, Arthur? Amazing how we can be mates together when you're wanting something. You know me now, do you? Well, of course. I showed you to your room. This is no time for all that. Have a look at that one in the corner. Mm. She hasn't batted an eyelid since you left, Arthur. You don't when you're in her condition. She does worry me. How do you suppose I feel? I found her. Now, will you two stop wittering and give me a chance? With bedside manners like yours, it's as well the patient's a corpse. No, she's not. How she looks hey. it. Now, I may have failed my finals, but I can tell a dead body from a live one. This is more like suspended animation. Catalepsy. Well, what do you know about her? She didn't know much about herself. Well, what does that mean? She couldn't even remember how she got here. Can you? Can you? Good point. I was walking down the lane. Then I was being shown to a room. And what came in between? Nothing. But I'm prepared to admit it, you see. Nothing. Blank. Odd. You're all right, though. What about that one? She can't be left in this place. So, as I see it, there are two options. Either she'll be taken off to hospital or dumped in that hole you've been digging. I tell you, that hole's for celery. Well, it's the right size and shape for her. Odd again, but very handy. Hospital. Phone for an ambulance. Quick, quick. Get Mrs M. Uh, no, if you don't mind. Take it yourself. In what? The wheelbarrow? But why not the car? A car? Us. A big. Expensive. Talk sense. I've been in it. I might even have enjoyed the ride if it hadn't been for the company. But nobody could forget a car like that. As you say. No, I, I, I'm not sure any longer which of us belongs in Santa's Fairy Grotto. But you owe me a favour, right? I suppose so. So, come with me now and cast an eye over that red monster standing in the drive. That? It belongs in a fairground. I wouldn't give it garage space. But well, the keys are still in. Did he leave in a hurry? It's nothing to me if some fool gets his car nicked. Well, I tell you, it's your car. Hey. Door open, see? Well, I'll grant you one thing. Either you've got a really twisted sense of humour or you're lacking somewhere. I couldn't have forgotten this object. Oh, sorry. There's bits of pieces of stuff in the glove compartment. You want to see? Uh, old envelopes. Benson Enterprises. You're Arthur Benson, aren't you? Oh, I don't know anything about Benson Enterprises, do you? Me? No. Picture postcards. Stamped, addressed and ready for the box. Dear... Doris, back on Monday, got lost yesterday. You should have been with us, Arthur and Madge. Who's Doris? She's, um... Oh, isn't... 
Isn't she a secretary? Oh, we are coming on. Now, what's a secretary for? Well, she's for Arthur. Hmm? What does what does Doris do? I tell you, I've never heard of a Doris. You run a business. You've got a secretary. What else? Think. I can't. He's gone. Well, what's happening to him? To us? I've got an idea. She tried it on me. Didn't get very far because I'm an awkward sort of a bastard. But even in that time, I lost the bit between the lane and here. I don't even know what he's talking about. No, you wouldn't. Arthur, I'm scared. Don't. Can't you see? This is his idea of a joke. If you'll just keep quiet for a minute, I'm trying to work this out. Lucky for you, one of us can still think. I've had about enough of you, young man. I don't know how she does it, but that doesn't matter. Only one thing counts. Once you give her a memory, it's gone. You're giving me a headache. Well, what are you going to do now? Complain to her? Oh, that's been tried over and over. By the time you've done complaining, you've forgotten what you were complaining about. You're a batty man. Yeah, and when so much has been wiped out that you can't say for certain who you are or how you got here, you can always dig the garden or make beds. You're not making sense. Well, what about that one stretched out stiff in the shed? Inga, you called her. Is that the end when everything's gone? How many do you reckon may be pushing up the spinach? Oh! I'll take the notice of him. Uh, oh, do what you like. I'm on my way. No, you... We can't leave the girl in that condition. We'll have to get her to a proper doctor. You will help, won't you? Uh, oh, well, only because I want to move fast and you've got the car. Well, give me a hand with the patient. I'm not going to walk out of here on her own. Uh, and you can fetch my rucksack, lady. It's on the bed where I dropped it. We've got a case up there, too. Move, then. Keep your eyes open for the sweet lady in charge. Well, what are you standing about for? Where are you going, my dear? The gentleman's baggage belongs in his room, as does yours. You can't stop me, Mrs. Meadowsweet. Now, why should I want to stop anybody? You've been talking to that young man, haven't you? I won't talk to you. I won't. I don't know what you may have done to make you so scared. What I've done? What have you done? I made you happy, my dear. Now, admit it. In these past few days, you've been happier than you've been since you were young and innocent. Please, stand aside. If you're afraid, there must be some nastiness we haven't got at yet. I've seen that girl in the shed. Don't be afraid of that, my dear. All come to it. I saw the hole. We aren't going to let girls and holes drive us away, surely. What girl? What hole? Oh, you've done it again. Done what, my dear? I still remember Miss Bray's nose. Now will she disappear? It doesn't matter, because now I know what you're doing. If I don't tell you how I know, you can't change my mind. I don't know why you do it. Kindness, my dear. Pure kindness. You kill people. You take away everything that makes them what they are. Only the bad bits. Badness is part of all of us. Take it away and we're done for. All right. I remember stealing cake and letting my sister get whacked for it. Remembering badness only makes it worse. That's me. Doing things I shouldn't have done behind the bicycle shed. I remember disappointments and meanness and bitterness. And without them, I shouldn't be me. You're not going to take them away. Listen to me, my dear. No, you listen to me. That girl can't be comfortable in the back there. Not stiff like that. But we can't break her legs to make them fit. Where's Madge got to? She only had to grab a couple of cases. I can't hang around much longer. We might all get caught. Caught? Hey, you don't think... Mrs M. Look, get in the car. Be ready to start the minute I leave the house. What about my wife? Yeah, well, I'm a fool to risk my neck, but I'm going back for her. You don't have to grasp that case so tightly, my dear. Now, if you won't let go, it must lie in the celery bed with you. Don't just stand there. Oh, my God. What have you been telling Mrs. Benson? I... No. You don't catch me that way. 
She told you the lot, didn't she? Now she's blanked out and set like a waxwork, just like the other. You've seen the other? I've just left her and... Have you? How did Arthur look when you saw him last? You won't make me forget. You won't. And you'll let that one go. Go where, young man? Can you remember where you were going? Where you came from? Who you are? I can remember all I want to. <laughs> A little lie, but let that pass. After all the lies are used up, we are left with the truth. So you met the Bensons before? No. <laughs> that means yes. They gave a lift to a young man. Was the young man you? No. <laughs> oh, to the untruths turn my stomach. But when it's in a good cause, remember the ride? I won't. I mean, it, it wasn't like that at all. Go on, my dear. As a matter of fact, we had met before. Ah. On the beach at Monty. <laughs> Oh, now, don't be absurd. A bit like Blackpool, actually. Uh, only more of everything. Oh, yes, I remember that well. Sun, sand, sea, and the women yes. throwing themselves at me. You're giving me cramps. I, I was celebrating my finals. Passed brilliantly, of course. <laughs> it's like a knife. Specialising in brain surgery. It's a natural gift. My dad bought me a junior surgeon's outfit when I was five, and I never looked back. <laughs> Enough. I remember my first set of scalpels gleaming under the lights of the Christmas tree. Stop. By Boxing Day, I'd operated on Mum, Gran, and the cat next door. For appendix hernia and ingrowing toenail. Ah, ah. Madge, your wife's out cold. Rigid. Had to drag her most of the way here. <laughs> Oh, come on. Oh. Well, they'll have to lie on top of each other in the back. Oh. Neither of them's going to bend. I left that hellcat on the floor, but she'll not stay squirming for long. <coughs> Haven't you got that engine started yet? What do you do? Oh, you're the driver. I can't remember. It's gone. It's all gone. You'll have to drive. Well, I never learn. Where would I get the money for a car? Oh. I should be outside in a minute, up to tricks we daren't even guess. I'm stuck, I tell you. I don't know where to start. Oh, move over. Oh, Oh. Oh. Well, you read a kid's joyriding, so it can't be too hard. I'll do what I can. Now, now don't blame me if we end up a tree. I uh, suppose you turn this. Ah, oh, now, uh, what do I do? You're on your own. If only I was. Is she coming? I can't see. Oh, don't turn to look back. Well, the drive twists and turns. Well, then twist and turn with it. She'll try something, I know she will. Some of them must have tried to escape before, but they didn't make it. If they had, the papers would have been full of it. How did she turn them back? Concentrate on the road, will you? Or slow down? How? Oh, look, there she is, in the middle of the drive. There's no way round. Well, we can't run her over. Well, then stop. Stop, stop! Uh, oh. You didn't stop. I trod on the wrong thing. You smashed into her. Do you want to go back? No, no. Press on. On, on. That sign says stop. Main road ahead. What do I do? You stop. You take your foot off the accelerator and jam it on the brake. Now the handbrake. This. You remembered. Remembered what? How to use the brake. Oh, why shouldn't I? And what are you doing at the wheel? You tired of our company 20 miles back. Uh, pardon me, that was days ago. And I got out because somebody's grizzling was giving me the gripes. If you got out, how did you get back? If I picked you up again, I must have a remarkably forgiving nature. Arthur? It's all very well for you, taking it easy in the back. But Arthur! If you hadn't insisted, we'd never have picked him up in the first place. Arthur? Who's this in the back with me? Hmm? My name's Inga. What? What am I doing here? Who are you? I'm not sure, madam. I thought my name was Benson, but I've been picking up strays like Bernardo. Now, if you don't mind me driving my own car... Arthur! Change places. Arthur, what are you doing in those dungarees? In Mrs. M by David Campton, Rosemary Leach was Mrs. Meadowsweet, Anne Jameson was Madge, and Roger Hume, Arthur. 
Simon was played by Terry Malloy, Miss Brasenose, Joyce Gibbs, and Inga, Patricia Gallimore. The play was directed in our Birmingham studios by Peter Windows. <laughs>